Have you ever felt overwhelmed from the impact of ADHD in the classroom? Managing the indicators of ADHD in the classroom can be a lot. In order to manage it though, first we need to understand it. If we don't, the dysregulated classroom takes the shine off of teaching pretty quickly. By supporting pupils with ADHD in the classroom, we make classroom management so much easier and more effective. But the strategies for supporting students with ADHD in the classroom also benefits other students too. So first you need to know how to understand the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Let's get started. Hi there teachers, Marian Busfield here from Engaging Curiosity to empower you to take charge in the classroom by supporting you with evidence-based classroom management strategies and resources. Classroom management is often overwhelming at the beginning, but with the right strategies and resources, you will master the classroom behavior and pave the way for dynamic instruction. I am a faith-led, married, mother of two, grandmother to one, outdoor enthusiast, and retired teacher. My passion is to share what I know about teaching to support this wonderful new generation of teachers. Videos will include topics on my five pillars of classroom management, which are building classroom community, classroom expectations, differentiation and in instruction, social emotional learning, and classroom organization. Look down below and find the link to download my free classroom management checklist. Inside the checklist, you will find my five pillars of classroom management broken down into steps you can take one at a time. A goal setting page is included to help you get organized and prioritized with the needs for your unique classroom. Download the checklist now and set your goals today. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today. Let's get started. When a student with ADHD in the classroom is supported, you have taken a crucial step in creating understanding and support for individuals affected by ADHD. Support your student, to support your students with ADHD, you need some good resources to bring you understanding. And so we're gonna talk finding resources for teaching students with ADHD. Dr. Edward Hallowell is a recognized expert on supporting individuals with ADHD. His books and videos offer practical guidance for both teachers and parents alike. Not only does Dr. Hallowell himself have ADHD, he works regularly with individuals with ADHD. Much of what I share about the impact of ADHD in the classroom is drawn from what I've learned from his resources. Other resources I have drawn from include Canadian ADHD Resource Alliance, or CADRA, Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, CHAD, and the site the Hallowell ADHD Centres. In the classroom, acknowledging diverse learning styles and implementing tailored strategies can make a significant difference in minimizing the, AD, the impact of ADHD in the class. Incorporating dynamic teaching methods, such as interactive activities and visual aids, helps engage students with ADHD in the classroom. Beyond the classroom, fostering opening communication with parents, promoting awareness, and collaborating with support services is essential to supporting students with ADHD and contributes to a more inclusive environment. By recognizing the multifaceted impact of ADHD in the classroom and embracing proactive measures for supporting students with ADHD in the classroom, teachers can create a supportive space that empowers students to thrive academically and personally. So what is the impact of ADHD on learning and how does ADHD affect education? Unless teachers are supporting students with ADHD in schools, ADHD can have a powerful negative impact on the student with ADHD, the other students, and you, the teacher, too. ADHD can make it difficult for a student to focus, pay attention, listen, put effort into schoolwork. The student may end up being fidgety, restless, talk too much, and be a disruption to the class. The impact of those behaviors for the student with ADHD can cause learning difficulties, impact grades, make it difficult to establish positive relationships at home or at school, lead to low self-esteem, and trigger behavioral issues. The impact of those behaviors on other students can cause distractions from their own learning caused by the disruptive poor, exposure to a dysregulated teacher, difficult interactions with a dysregulated peer, and eventually loss of learning time. The impact on the teacher can be added stress from man managing one or more dysregulated students, added stress from loss of functioning, functional learning time, and feelings of inadequacy or even imposter sy syndrome. With all of these impacts in the classroom, navigating challenges with a sustained attention and focus is a priority in supporting students with ADHD in the classroom. In the dynamic classroom environment, students with ADHD may have difficulty with maintaining prolonged focus on tasks. On the other hand, the impact of ADHD in the classroom can also be positive and benefit all students. 
For example, one, teachers who are supporting pupils with ADHD in the classroom adopt a flexible teaching approach that incorporates frequent changes in activities, brief breaks, and interactive elements. This flexibility helps cater to diverse attention spans. When you consider that the children in the classroom can be as much as 12 months apart in age, even students without ADHD may have noticeably different attention spans. Two, implement personal strategies to manage ADHD in the classroom, such as breaking down tasks into small manageable segments and providing clear, concise instructions facilitates better engagement. These strategies are all beneficial to all students. Three, collaborate with parents to understand the individual needs of each student. This may be more elaborate for some students than others, but it doesn't have to be time consuming. I rarely started parent conferences to tell parents of the struggles their child was having. The conference is always started with the question, what questions do you have for me? I found that by starting with this question, I was typically able to turn the parent into a collaborator. I was easily able to answer their questions in a way that enlisted their help. Four, explore assistive technologies which can further enhance the learning experience and address the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Although not all children will need assistive technology, there may well be students without an official diagnosis that need support from assistive technology. I have a deep fondness for one student with whom I worked. He was a student with some very significant needs and yet assessments determined he did not fit within the definition of any particular diagnosis. He is a classic case of a student for whom the assistive technology initially brought in for other students would have benefited him as well. Five, you can change the impact of ADHD in the classroom, which also means supporting different learning styles. Adapting teaching methods is required for a successful accommodation for ADHD students in a classroom. Each student, regardless of whether or not they have ADHD, has a unique way of processing information. So when you plan your lessons for multiple learning styles, you are supporting all of your students, including those with ADHD. Six, provide a supportive and stimulating learning environment that allows for movement and exploration, which can also positively influence intellectual outcomes. Seven, collaborate with special education professionals. They will create a bridge uh, for your students between teachers. As the special ed teacher is familiar with what you're doing, they will be able to provide the subsequent teacher with an understanding of what worked. This can be a tremendous support for the student. And of course, this kind of relationship with the special ed teacher means you get the goods on your incoming students as well. By embracing these strategies to manage ADHD in the classroom, teachers not only address the intellectual impact of ADHD in the classroom, but also cultivate an inclusive and dynamic classroom that maximizes the potential of every student. This aligns both with my pillars of classroom management and what was implemented during a student with ADHD case study by a group called Raising Health and Children, RHC. So far, we have addressed some of the academic impact of ADHD in the classroom, but what is the social emotional impact of ADHD in the classroom? The social emotional impact of ADHD in the classroom can involve everyone. Because of this, it is essential for teachers to create supportive environments that build resilience. Dr. Hallowell's insights from ADHD 2.0, no, I am not an affiliate, emphasize the importance of understanding and addressing the social emotional impact of ADHD. Students with ADHD may face challenges in social interactions, impulse control, emotional regulation, Supporting students with ADHD in the classroom requires cultivating a compassionate classroom culture, which involves promoting empathy, patience, and open communication. And it is also essential that there are many supervised opportunities for students to build relationship with each other to strengthen the classroom community. To build resilience and relationships and community, educators can, for example, implement strategies to manage ADHD in the classroom that acknowledge and celebrate individual strengths, fostering a sense of belonging. Uh, teachers can provide structured routines and clear expectations, which provide a sense of stability, contributing to emotional well-being. Teachers can collaborate with school counselors, parents, and support services, which ensures a comprehensive approach to addressing social emotional needs. You can create opportunities for student self-reflection, teach coping mechanisms, empowers students to navigate challenges, by emphasizing positive reinforcement and acknowledging progress, teachers play a pivotal role in building resilience for countering the negative impact of ADHD in the classroom. In turn, a supportive environment not only aids in managing the social emotional impact of ADHD in the classroom, 
but also cultivates a foundation for lifelong emotional well-being and success. Nurturing positive relationships with peers is a crucial aspect of addressing the social emotional impact of ADHD in the classroom and minimizing the impact of ADHD in the classroom. As a teacher, creating an inclusive classroom environment involves building a sense of community and understanding among the students. Classroom community building encourages offering opportunities for teamwork. Group activities and collaborative projects provide opportunities for positive social interactions and for practicing social skills. Implementing structured social skills lessons and promoting empathy helps students with ADHD navigate social situations effectively. Creating opportunities for peer support means students can assist each other in understanding and accommodating diverse needs. Acknowledging and celebrating individual strengths within the peer group cultivates a culture of acceptance, which offers support to not only the student with ADHD, but all students. Open communication channels, including class discussions on inclusivity and diversity, contribute to a supportive social environment. These may be supported by books using storytelling for ADHD understanding. By recognizing and appreciating student differences, the students develop empathy and learn to develop to value each other's unique qualities. Together, these things can go a long way towards addressing the impact of ADHD in the classroom. In doing so, educators play a pivotal role in creating a positive peer dynamic that enhances the overall social emotional well-being of all students with ADHD and fosters a sense of belonging within the classroom community. Teaching organizational skills also changes the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Teachers are well aware of the challenges that students with ADHD in the classroom may face in organization and time management will be crucial. When left unaddressed, these challenges can have a significant impact on ADHD. Meltdowns from students can occur from stress, class being stopped in order to support the disorganized student, a lack of student focus caused by being overwhelmed. Some strategies could include clear and consistent routines, providing structure that aid in task completion, break down assignments into smaller manageable steps, and this helps students approach tasks more systematically. Use visual aids such as charts or planners, assist in organizing priorities and deadlines, Organizational tools like color-coded folders or digital apps promote accountability and help students stay on top of assignments. Providing regular check-ins and feedback along with teaching goal-setting techniques for a sense of achievement. As I mentioned earlier, collaboration with parents may mean you are supporting students with ADHD at home. Keeping in mind that ADHD has a strong genetic component, so implementing these strategies at home may be a process over time. By providing ways that parents can be supporting students with ADHD at home, teachers contribute to a holistic approach that supports students in developing essential organizational time and, manage and time management skills. Communicating a positive supportive posture with the parents benefits everyone as well. Ultimately, these strategies are good for supporting students with ADHD in schools, and they help to address the academic impact of ADHD. Hopefully strategies for supporting students with ADHD also empower students to excel in their studies as they go forward in time. Considerations on how to personalize instruction to change impact of ADHD in the classroom include mitigating the academic impact of ADHD, which involves adopting personalized approaches that cater to diverse learning needs, aligning with Dr. Hallowell's insights from ADHD 2.0. Acknowledging both the individual strengths and challenges of students with ADHD is fundamental to crafting effective teaching strategies. Implementing differentiated instruction allows educators to tailor their approaches based on students' unique learning styles. These methods accommodate diverse preferences. By providing additional support like one, -on -guide, one guidance through peers or adults or extra resources, you have ensured that students receive the assistance they need. For a teacher to be flexible in assessment methods, as would occur in a differentiated classroom is key, allowing students to demonstrate understanding through various means. Preventing teacher overwhelm while diversifying instruction is essential. The suggestions above can seem like a lot, and maybe they are initially, but when we really examine what it means to diversify instruction, it just means to differentiate instruction. This can seem overwhelming, but can be as simple as offering choice boards, a choice between a paper or a digit, digital, excuse me, activity, ongoing observations, discussions and conferences. These options are less formal, but they can still provide a teacher with enough information to gauge a student's progress. 
Offering choices in types of assignments and using technology can enhance engagement, which is another way of making learning more accessible. All of these changes the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Collaboration with special ed professionals facilitates the development of an IEP program that address specific academic needs. But I've also found that by implementing many of these strategies, an IEP has not been necessary. The impact of ADHD in the classroom has been successfully minimized. By embracing personalized approaches, educators create an inclusive learning environment that not only recognizes the academic impact of ADHD in the classroom, but also maximizes the potential for success in each student. Dr. Hallowell's emphasis on understanding and adapting to individual learning styles reinforces the importance of tailoring educational strategies for optimal outcomes, and it dovetails completely with differentiation in the classroom. So this is essentially work you are doing to reach all of your students anyways. Do strategies to support students with ADHD in the classroom work? You may wonder. Data was collected and analyzed in the 1980s with a student with ADHD case study. This student with ADHD case study was done by an organization called Raising Healthy Children. The participants are now adults with their own children. I find it incredibly encouraging that the follow-up studies and research on ADHD student behavior also show that the children of the participants showed improvement. RHC provided elementary school teachers with classroom management and instruction strategies parents with skills to promote opportunities for, social, for children's active involvement in the classroom and family, the child with social and emotional skills training, and I am delighted when I see this list. They start by saying classroom management matters. And when I look at what RHC implemented, I see a close alignment with what Dr. Hallowell, uh, Dr. Hallowell is suggesting. The recommendations also align with my pillars of classroom management, which gives me continued confidence to share what I share with you each day. That delights me because I know it works. I've done it. I know it is effective with students with ADHD from personal experience. On a last note, nothing in the RHC document indicates the students were medicated. That is not to say that none of these children received medication, but it does mean that with or without medication, these strategies were necessary and effective. Whether or not a student is medicated is something that is beyond our control. I am not anti-medication. I am all about what is within our control. Classroom management is within our control. You've got this. You wouldn't have read this far or listened this long if you weren't looking for answers. You will do it. Just give yourself time. One step at a time, day by day, you have the ability to change the impact of ADHD in the classroom. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. See you soon. Bye now. I appreciate you sharing your time with me today and I hope you join me again soon. Take steps to calm the classroom chaos one step at a time. Please remember to use the link down below to uh, my free classroom management checklist. See you soon.